Tens of thousands of years ago, primitive people brought fire into caves. This was the first technology. Our ancestors began to heat up their dwellings with fire and cook meat on coals. Many of them didn't live to the age of 20 and died from lung cancer. The air in the caves was filled with unbearable smog. What has changed since then? Mankind has improved technologically and the number of fires has increased considerably. These fires now burn in car engines, diesel locomotives, motor ships and airplanes, in heating furnaces, in atomic power stations, in boiler rooms and in factories. A number of the harmful and poisonous elements in emissions have become considerably more abundant in comparison to those primitive fires. Thanks to surface and air transportation, we are breathing air, drinking water and eating food products that contain a bit less than half of the components of the periodic table of elements. Nitric oxide, carbon, sulfur, aldehyde, benzopyrene, soot, mercury, arsenic, lead, chlorine, polynuclear hydrocarbon and radioactive isotopes. The list of these scary names can go on forever. It is precisely this atmospheric cocktail that we get whenever we go to the park to breathe the fresh air. The increasing number of motor vehicles has caused the concentration of these harmful substances to become lethal. There's also no point in forgetting about aviation. Each launch of a heavy rocket, as well as every flight of a multi-engined aircraft, creates a hole in the ozone layer that is comparable in size with the area of a European country. By the end of the century, transportation will have the capability of killing more than 150 million people in accidents and disasters and causing over 1.5 billion people to become invalids and cripples. How to avoid making this monstrous sacrifice? How to keep our planet green and not ash gray? Ride horses? Walk? Hey, Marty McFly, could you lend us, the planet's current inhabitants, 7 billion hoverboards from your past future? Indeed, effective transport has already been developed by the scientist Anatoly Yunitsky. This genius of an engineer invented the ideal transport in every sense of the word. It's called the Rail Skyway. More than 30 years and several hundreds of millions of dollars have already been invested in order to bring Yunitsky's project to life. What do you envision to be the transport of the future? Just imagine a lightweight train or a sports car with steel wheels which is situated on open work elevated rails. Inside the rails, tensioned wires are stretched with the strength of hundreds of tons. Due to the ideal evenness of the track and the super aerodynamics of the rolling stock, it is capable of reaching speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. The cost of the trip to you will be seven times cheaper than that of a conventional train. The level of safety will be 2,000 times higher than traveling by automobile and a trip will require 10 times less electrical energy or fuel. And that's not the whole story. The tensioned wire rails are mounted onto lightweight but exceptionally durable supports that make it possible to save the layer of fertile soil, which is currently located under highways and railways, from destruction, an area four times greater in size than the total territory of Great Britain. This soil will remain alive, it will breathe, and the green plants growing on it will produce sufficient oxygen for billions of people to breathe. In order to implement this form of transport all around the world, it must be compared with equivalent amounts that have already been spent, which today is approximately the same cost as two or three football players or one or two paintings by not even the most famous of impressionists. And it is possible to make this a reality with only public funding. This is precisely the type of transport that is needed by you and me, and only we can cause this project to become a reality. Become a co-investor of the public transport future. Invest in the future of your planet. Find out more.